Hello again, and I've got another gear check video for you today. Um, in this video, we're going to look at our textile items, so slings and ropes, and how to inspect those, and some of the common things that we are likely to identify when we're doing uh, these checks and inspections. Um, so, if you've not seen the main PPE checking video that I've done, uh, it's definitely worth checking that out before you get into this one. It just goes into a lot more detail. Uh, on things that I'm going to cover here um, but a quick recap on that is well we need to make sure that we've logged all the items that we've got in our stores especially things like rope and textiles because they do have a definite lifespan so we need to know when we got them and when we put them into use so we can identify when their life has ended when they've run out of time um, when we go to check and inspect this gear we need to have a visual check of it we need to look over it we need to feel for damage um, and be quite thorough in that and it can take quite a while for longer ropes um, so you just you know set yourself some time aside uh, have frequent breaks um, and just kind of take your time and be thorough with it um, remember that these videos aren't a substitute for going and doing a proper competent person course so I'd highly advise doing that um, we're just going to see some examples of wear and damage on these textiles it's not going to be an exhaustive list um, I can't show all of that in a video, so go and do a proper course. Okay, here we go. So when it comes to doing any of our checks, we want to set ourselves up with plenty of room to work, um, good levels of light, so outside in the summer or in a well-lit room inside. Um, if you've got digital copies of your inspection forms, it's fine. If you've got paper copies, have those to hand. Especially useful for seeing kind of what other issues you might have recorded for those particular items in a previous inspection, just to check up on. Um, the first thing I'll check with the sling will be the label. Um, I'm going to check that it's one of mine, it's got my mark on, and I'm going to look at the date and serial number so I can tell if that's in date still. Um, starting with the stitching, just inspecting there's no damage or wear on there, and then I'm going to work my way around. So I'm feeling and looking, going around the whole sling, slow enough to see any damage passing in front of my eyes. And then when I get back to stitching, flip the sling around again and go around one more time looking at the opposite side of the sling. So you should be able to feel any damage on the edges, uh, any fluffy spots on the flat, and you should be able to see anything um, doing that. So some slings have wear sleeves on. Now if these can be removed, obviously you need to come off, but ones like these lion anchor slings, uh, the stitching, the wear sleeve is stitched in place, uh, so you've got to kind of pull it down and that will allow you to see the contrasting colour stitching. Check all of that again, free of abrasion and cuts. And then visually and tactile inspect all of the main sling body that you can access. Okay, There's only so much of that you can get to with the wear sleeve. It's like I say, it can't be removed, it's stitched in place. I'm going to check over the wear sleeve, because okay, that's really important. It is protecting the sling inside from damage. If there are holes or heavy abrasions in the wear sleeve, then it's no longer going to be doing that job. Um, and then down to the other end again, pull that wear sleeve back as far as you can. And again, just check over as much of the sling body that's visible to you as you can, making sure you get both the inner and outer surfaces on that. Okay. So I've got a couple of examples of uh, damaged slings that I've retired over the years. Here we've got one uh, from an outdoor centre kit store. Now this has had a number drawn on it in some kind of marker pen. Most of the marker pens um, contain a solvent that will actually damage the nylon or polyester of the webbing or sling there, or this, well, this example is a caving belt. Um, so writing names and numbers directly on them, that's that's definite no-no, unless you've got a specific OK from the manufacturer for that type of pen. Um, here we've got a bit of paint. Again, it's a contaminant. We don't know exactly how that paints are uh, going to affect the fabric of the sling so we, we just can't use that it won't clean off um, so that one's had it as well um, abrasion and cuts and nicks they're the next kind of common ones we've got a really kind of heavy patch of fluffing here um, this one was damaged as part of an anchor setup 
climbing on the gritstone in the Peak District, which is classic territory for wrecking slings. So this is more than just a bit of soft fluff. We're going through quite a lot of the fibres there. Um, you know, we can really kind of get that puffed up. Um, so yeah, we've taken quite a lot of the strength out of that sling, so that's a, a definite, definite fail on that one. This one's similar, except more kind of towards the edge the damage is occurring there. Um, so the locking stitch that kind of holds the web together, that's gone through so you can just see the strands are separated apart there. So that's lost a, a, a large amount of its strength. It's definitely a goner. Even bigger, thicker, tougher slings suffer from the same kind of problems here. So we've got again quite a large area at the side there. I think this one might have been struck by a rock. Um, doesn't appear to be like cut, just really whacked. And then a slightly more kind of subtle example. This is a uh, a little cut in the side. Just see like a little sharp nick there probably caused by a little chunk of quartz on a gritstone boulder again just slicing through but again we're separating fibres there you know we're, this thing's cut and seen a reduction in strength so yeah all of those quite comfortably are meeting retirement criteria now, inspecting our ropes is very similar to inspecting the slings except there's more on the inside of a rope so that feeling as well as looking is even more important um, with a rope it's kind of really important to spin it around as you're looking and feeling, check all sides of that as you're going through. And it could obviously take a long time to do long lengths of rope or a lot of rope so you've just got to be thorough and take some breaks. Don't forget to check the labelling on the end of your ropes as well, make sure you've got your lengths marked and, and your ID tags. If you've got something like cow's tails, make sure you undo the knots. You should be periodically undoing your knots on your cow's tails and things anyway. Um, but yeah, get that all out of there. You've got to be able to see the rope. All right. You might feel a few lumps and bumps from where the knot's been, but you can kind of work those out with your fingers generally. Now pretty much all the ropes that we use for caving and climbing are constructed with an inner core, usually white fibre, and an outer sheath. Anywhere along the rope where we can see through the outer sheath into the core, that's a reason to retire that rope to discard it, or at the very least, you know, identify that it's just isolated that damage, cut that bit out, and end up with two smaller ropes. Um, so whether it's been kind of cut through, worn through, melted through, if you can see that in a core, it's definitely a goner. Um, I favour using ropes with different colour sheaths and cores because it's very much easier to inspect it. Now this is really fluffy, this will have drawn your eye to it anyway um, but it's quite hard to see with a white sheath and white core um, that the core is actually visible there but yeah that's, yeah, that's definitely gone. Um, with a two colour rope like this one it just becomes a little bit easier to see. I mean this is quite heavily fluffed anyway, I'd be pulling this out of service, would be you know spotting this on an inspection straight away um, but I can definitely see through to the to the white core fibres in there. That's definitely far too gone, far too abraded to be safe to use that one. A very extreme example for you here. Uh, so this is a rock strike. So big boulders whacked into this rope beneath us while we've been working and just gone straight through the sheath and you can just see all the core fibres there, all the core bundles really visible. Um, so I mean you're not going to miss that on in an inspection. Um, but this damage, uh, it doesn't always show up like this with a rock strike. So the sheath could be intact, but the core bundles could be damaged. And that's why when we're inspecting our ropes, we're not just looking at them. We're running our hands along and we're feeling. So as we go over our rope, any lumps, bumps, flat spots, anything that just doesn't feel right inside it, um, that's really important to be looking for that or be, rather be feeling for that. Um, so it's not always visible damage on the outside. So we do need that tactile inspection on our ropes, not just looking over them. We do need to feel along them so we're making sure that we spot any of that damage. Um, this one here has been up against a hot surface, hot ducting or something like that. 
um, the sheath has melted, it's got really hard and plasticky, you can actually see where the core has burst through it at one point. Again, you're not going to miss that in an inspection, but it's this kind of melty, plasticky thing that you really want to be watching out for. Um, again, just a visual check on this, you might not spot that, so if you run this through your hands, you'll feel that that's hard, it's like solid plastic, very easy to identify. So remember, as well as looking, feel your ropes as well. Kind of linked to that melting one here, I've got a piece of rope that's been glazed and visually this is really tricky to spot. This is another one of those that very much relies on you feeling along the rope. So this is rough, it's spiky, it's a bit like sandpaper, it's not as badly melted as the previous example. Um, but you can definitely feel that's gone plasticky and hard. So this is typically caused by lowering people uh, too fast or abseiling too fast. It'll happen quicker on dry ropes than, than wet ropes, um, but you still you know, shouldn't be bombing down them this fast uh, anyway, even if they are wet. Um, so even though it's not a big visual impact that, I like to treat this kind of, this abra uh, this glazing like it was really heavy abrasion. You know, when you look at it and you identify it, just imagine that whole section of glazed rope is is physically visibly damaged, um, and that's kind of the same way you treat it. So that's you know chemically altered the fibres of the rope there with that heat. That's definitely uh, retiring. That's definitely being scrapped. This one's uh, from some fixed rigging at an SRT training facility. So this isn't kind of damage per se, but what we've got here is a long-term rigging. This has been rigged over a small 7mm pattern mayon, and it's just pinched that rope. And what we've got here is just such a tight bend that the little bundles of the core fibres are just poking their way out of gaps in the sheath. Um, so even though this isn't damage damage, this is, you know, the sheath and the is parting and allowing the core to come out so that one's been removed from service and replaced. If you're going to leave long term rigging up anywhere it's definitely using much bigger connectors, carabiners, you know, 10, 12 mil mayons, things like that just to have that radius a little bit softer um, but you can see yeah, quite an acute bend there and it's almost folded the rope over and started to pop that open. Um, one more to look at here, so I've got an old set of my cow's tails, I've been hanging on these quite a lot working and I came to inspect them and I just, just can't get that knot undone, it's just like an absolute rock. Um, so there's no shock absorbency left in these cow's tails because the knots can't tighten anymore, um, but more importantly for inspection, I can't see what's going on inside this knot, if I can't untie it, I can't see if there's any grit or damage going on in here, so that's not inspectable. So that on its own is a reason to retire these cow's tails. Um, so it's definitely worth cracking the knots off on your cow's tails periodically, untying them, checking over and, and retying everything. Because um, yeah, once it gets to this stage, that's that's had it. I can't inspect that. So retired cow's tails. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of how to go about performing your checks on your rope and slings and any other software and it's highlighted some of the common things that we encounter while we're doing that. Like I said before, it's not an exhaustive list, it's, uh, we couldn't possibly cover all of it in a video like this so it's highly worth going and doing an outdoor industry specific uh, competent person PPE checking course. You know, it's well worth the effort and, and time and money for one of those. Um, so just a quick reminder, when you've got a bit of gear in your hands, look it over, feel for damage, check any function it has, um, and if you're not sure whether something's safe to use or not, take it out of service immediately, put it in quarantine, and the best people to speak to are the manufacturer. Okay, If you've got any of those kind of 50-50 decisions, is it okay, is it not, take some photos and get in touch with the manufacturer. They are the best people to give you that advice, uh, not the internet, um, the actual maker itself. All right. Um, keep your eye out for other videos, different types of gear. I'll be doing um, checking videos a bit like this one uh, in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. See you again.